one of the greatest fears I had was would I be able to do my job because never having been under fire, never having been in the, in the stress of combat, everybody goes through that. And that was the greatest fear you had at any time was would you measure up in the eyes of your buddies. And th that was probably one of the greatest motivating factors to all of us. I think a great deal of it was based on the fact that it was so instilled in us that you can't let another Marine down. So consequently, you wanted to always measure up and do your best. The pre-landing bombardment had commenced. The din and the noise was so absolutely incredible, it's indescribable. You couldn't even yell to the man right next to you and have him hear you. I was absolutely scared to death, and so was everybody else. And I, the, the main thing that concerned me was I was afraid I was going to wet my pants. And yeah, I looked at the island, and, and all you could see, it, was, it just looked like a thin line. It was just a sheet of flame backed by just this huge black wall of smoke. And I thought, my God, none of us will ever get out of that place. All up and down the beach, shells were going off. Amtraks were getting hit on the beach before they could let the guys out. You could see guys falling all along the beach because of the extremely heavy small arms fire and artillery and mortar fire. So we got in off the beach as far as we could go and hit the deck um, in the sand. And ju just, as, just before I hit the deck, I happened to look down and my right foot missed no more than by six inches. A Japanese mine that was in the form of a 500-pound bomb buried in the sand, and it had a metal pressure plate on the top of it. A little way down the, the beach, I saw a boy step on one, and he just, it just atomized him. He just disappeared. The morning of the second day, our regiment, the 5th Marines, was ordered to take the airfield. So we started across on a trot, and the concussion from the Jap artillery shells was, was so loud and so constant that it was like, the, it was though, as though the ground was swaying back and forth. And here you were up run, running through this, and you could hear the shrapnel go as big pieces, you know, would come growling by you. When we got to the other side, Fortunately, we got up under some little bushes and the Japs couldn't see us. We got out of the line of fire. I was shaking like a leaf, and I looked at one of the veterans, and one of the Guadalcanal veterans, and he was shaking as bad as I was. And he said, that's a tough duty, Sledgehammer. He said, I'd hate the hell to have to do that every day. One of the things that the frontline infantrymen had to face was filth. Filth and fear went right together. By the third day, either you or your foxhole buddy told the other one he stunk. And of course, you both stunk from the, the, the terrible heat, the sweat, absolutely no way to, to get yourself cleaned up. And then in the tropics, when men were killed, say in the, in the, in the morning, by that night, the, they were beginning to bloat and the odor was getting pretty bad. I felt that my, I would never get that uh, stench of dead and rot and filth out of my nostrils. The Japanese had what was called infiltration down to a fine art, and they laid up in the caves, deep in the caves all night. So while we were attacking the caves all day, they were in a safe place getting rest. I think every, every man in my unit, except Snafu and I, at one time or another, was involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that's the most god-awful, uh, primitive-sounding thing, it was, it was almost like I thought often that that's the way Neanderthal must, man must have been. I mean, they'd get in the hole, you'd hear these un ungodly grunts and cases and guttural sounds and so forth before the guy finally killed the Jap. And uh, the Japs were incredibly aggressive. They were incredibly brave. My company landed with, uh, K K-35 landed at Peleliu with 235 men, and we had 64% casualties. The division was top-notch, one of the finest in World War II, I say the finest, and it was shot to pieces. The casualties was higher than any division at Tarawa, as high as any division at Iwo. But I must admit that I learned how to survive there, as well as one could survive.